masturbation can boost your immune immune system oh wow so you know what dude if do your part i guess What's up, everybody? You have just tuned in to the Tether Radio Podcast, the only podcast keeping you from spiraling out into the infinite abyss. I'm your host, Daniel, and I'm joined, as always, by Allie. What up? What's up, dude? Man, just, uh, shit's getting weird. (laughs) Shit is getting, shit's been weird, but it's getting weirder. (laughs) Shit is, on the weird scale, it is definitely tipping to more. It's all the way. It's pretty (laughs) far over. We're, we're pretty far right on the fucking weird uh, spectrum. So. <laughs> what a time to be alive, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. No shit, and for an indefinite amount of time. Oh, who knows, fun. really? <laughs> we're coming at you hot from the bunker, the Bradley Bunker. Uh, yeah, man. Stuff has been pretty, uh, pretty fucking wild lately. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm just going to go ahead and preface uh, episode 92 with... I'm sorry, but when the only thing in the news is coronavirus related, oh, it gotcha. really kind of paints us in a corner for this show. Yeah, man. <laughs> we'll try to we'll try to put some light to it and yeah. uh, and you know bring our usual attitude problems to it all. But <laughs> yes. but yeah, this is pretty virus heavy. Yes. We do have a couple small things that are not for coronavirus. Sure. For sure. Um, Man, I would like to right off the top yeah. tell you guys this story. <laughs> yes, please, please, my God. <laughs> okay. I swear this isn't a joke. Like my coworker came up and started telling me this the other day and I as soon as he walked away from my desk, I like opened up notepad in my phone and wrote notes down because it was so good. <laughs> Um, also, this was completely unprovoked. He just walked up and launched into this and told me, which makes it even better. So, his grandmother, just years ago, went into their cellar one day after, uh, like, what? After nothing. She went into the <laughs> cellar one day, and some canned vegetables she had had fallen off a shelf and broken. So, they had gone bad, so she took them out by the barn and dumped them out in the grass and, like, threw the jars away. Mm-hmm. So she went on with her day, and she looks back over that way, and several of her geese are just laying there on their backs with their feet in their air, dead from having eaten, spoiled, whatever. Yeah. And she's like, well, that's really sad, but, like, she's resourceful. She lives on a farm, and she makes quilts all the time, so she plucked all their feathers to use those, and she left the geese for Grandpa to deal with when he got home. Yeah. So she goes on with what she's doing. A couple hours later... Here comes a naked, stumbling goose <laughs> waddling up to her because yes. they were all drunk, <laughs> not dead. They were so drunk, they didn't wake up to being plucked, oh which I imagine God. fucking hurts. Right. <laughs> so now they're naked and they're stumbling around and they're starting to get sunburned because it's summertime. A sunburned goose. Who can, you can't have a sunburned goose. No, nobody likes a sunburned goose. She's like, well, we can't have that. So she fashions them some goose shirts out of feed bags, as you do. As one does, and if necessary. Grandpa comes home and sees all these naked geese still drunk, stumbling around in shirts around the yard. And he's just like, what? That's it. That's the story. There's not a punchline. That's it. But like, what? That is so fucking amazing. Naked geese. Dude. Naked I can't. geese. I cannot. I mean, so to to deconstruct this story a little bit. <laughs> Let's talk it through. So uh <laughs> and we we talked about it a little bit. Um I've been telling people right and left, so dude. sorry if you've already heard me tell you. <laughs> Um, I have heard of, like, fruit falling on, you know, like, apple orchards and stuff. Oh, yeah, or, like, when pumpkins rot. Like, squirrels love a rotting pumpkin, so they get drunk. And, yeah, Yeah. and so this stuff just sits out there and ferments, and then the the little critters get over there and just get tanked on it. And they end up, they're fine, they're just drunk, and it wears off, but, like, the videos of, like, drunk squirrels trying to climb a tree, and they just can't. (laughs) 
<laughs> it, it, it kind of like honestly watching videos of like drunk animals i'm like god i'm sure that's how i look right like, it's like me trying to like fucking get like a bag of pretzels out of the pantry or something you know like i was just gonna cook some mac and cheese <laughs> yeah <laughs> somebody is watching videos of us being like look at this poor bastard trying yeah. to make mac and cheese the fucking grays so drunk <laughs> Yeah, the grays. The grays are watching us drunkenly try to try to make a, a fucking satisfy our Mac attacks. So. <laughs> oh, that's fucking amazing, oh, man. man. <laughs> Dude, so when I was heading here this morning, I, I told you this before we started recording, but yeah. so we co- record on Sunday mornings, mm. and um, I passed this fairly big church, and there was nobody there, and I'm like, yeah. I wonder if they're closed. So I creep on their Facebook, and they've. As of Friday, they closed all their services and, like, meetings and everything for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, it's getting so weird. And, like, yeah, a lot of, like, they're live streaming and stuff. And, like, mm. yeah, you can still do things. But I look up this mega church. It's called Faith Promise. And it's on uh, Pellissippi out toward, like, if you're heading toward Oak Ridge. Mm-hmm. It's huge. And they, like, if you live around Knoxville at all, you see the Faith Promise stickers on everybody's car. We, we call it the Christian compound. I mean, <laughs> the, so, it really does look like a compound. Though. And I'm like, yeah, it does. And I'm like, they have mega services, uh-huh. like thousands of people, right? And like, I'm like high production. Yeah, like, like huge, huge. Like what would you say? Three big screens, like behind yeah, the mean, guy it, preaching. It looked like yeah, yeah, I mean three three screens that are like whatever yeah. diagonal diagonal yeah. uh, length, probably in the twenty feet oh, range, yeah. kind uh, of thing. So, so so I'm like, if anybody should cancel in-person services it's yeah. these that have a huge yeah giant crowd nope they posted a video of their super cool preacher Jeez. talking about how no we're still having service god said not to live in a spirit of fear and uh blah blah and bullshit this and that and then uh. and then he's like at the end of it he's like I think we should have more people here than ever before. And I'm like, this is this is the worst message, you idiot. What are Man. you doing? The, these are the people that are, like, fucking going to <sighs> propagate this disease. Yeah. And, like, ugh. Like, yeah, I'm still, like, going, like, you know, I went to, like, Starbucks yesterday and hit a couple stores and stuff and, yeah. like, hung out last night and stuff. But I'm not going to, like a church service of a couple thousand people. Yeah. And I'm also not encouraging everybody to go out and do stuff. Like I'm just not good at being home all the time. And I figure sometime in the next day or two, I'll just start staying home. Yeah. So I'm like trying to get my last hurrah, I guess, (laughs) you know, but, but like to encourage your thousands of followers to also come out and hang out in close quarters. And it just, it feels irresponsible well and and it's 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 one of these things that like you know what i'm i know that or i don't know this but i think that this is coming from a a, a, a i don't know a place of love for for lack of a better term i think they mean well but it's like dude to turn your to to turn a blind eye to fucking science yeah. and like yeah come on man <laughs> come mean, on man if anything <laughs> It costs you zero dollars to just have an online yeah, service. Yeah. And I don't know, man. Like, yeah. it's just a bad look. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It's totally, a, a, it's a supremely bad look. I, I saw somebody say that they heard a superintendent talking about closing schools. And yeah. the, the Whatever it was they said was something like, in the end, we're not going to be able to tell whether we overreacted as much as we will be able to tell if we underreacted. Yeah, and yeah. that's a good way to look at it. Like, and like we were we were kind of talking about it uh, yeah. before that. You know, we've we've been obviously watching this as everybody else has, and you know, slowly these things are getting rolled out. Slowly, you know, numbers are increasing and all that jazz and stuff. And uh, and I think that it's it's not. I would like to be basically sitting around at Christmas and say, "Hey, wasn't that wasn't that funny? How like you know everybody bought all that toilet paper and like we had sure. some we had supplies and stuff if need be and yeah. all that jazz." 
Um, that's that's way better than I miss a third of my friends. Yeah, you know, exactly, I mean, exactly. You know, and uh, it's just it's the 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 issue at this point, in my opinion, is not the virus. The issue is these panickers that are just like you know, instead of instead of buying stuff for a couple weeks or whatever to have at your house. I totally believe in being prepared. Yeah. But you don't need to stockpile it. You don't need 80,000 rolls of toilet paper. Uh, no. You don't need 30 pounds of ground beef. No. You know, it's, it's like your lady at the store that was yeah. buying half a cart Literally. of different stocks. Stocks. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Are you making all of the soup? <laughs> yeah. Are you making? How much soup are you making? All of it. All of it. All of it. That's how much soup I'm making. <laughs> Did she have anything else? Yeah. I mean, she had... She Stuff had to go a, in the stock, I guess. Yeah. So she... Well, and that was the other thing that was that has been really bizarre is like, I would have thought that produce would almost go untouched. Right. Kind of thing. Or at least it wouldn't... The you, thing you sent this morning about <laughs> it being a side quest. <laughs> Onions? I better get all the onions. <laughs> yes. No, but I mean, Megan and I went to the store uh, yesterday, the 14th, and uh, dude, it's just, it is wild. Yeah. It's, it's no shit. There are, there were potatoes, <laughs> there were, uh, there were green peppers, and then there were bananas, and like that was kind of the gist of the produce section. Are you serious? Like, yeah, it was like fucking wild like i'm i'm sure i'm, I'm not trying to sensationalize yeah, no no there were other there was but other that was produce, pretty much it but that was kind of it and yeah. i mean we're talking about completely empty bins yeah. like it, it's it's just it's just like weird. what are you doing with all the shiitake mushrooms yeah like what are you doing yeah <laughs> It, it's just it's it's bizarre it's super fucking bizarre stuff but no, uh, i just don't like i <clears throat> a, a friend of mine on um instagram yeah um she lives in maine and she posted a story and she was like, I never have had a panic attack and I had one today because of the grocery store. Yeah. Like, and she was like, she even put like a content warning on her little story and was like, yeah. if this is going to freak you out, like, don't watch it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, that's good. But I, I watched it and it was, I mean, every aisle in her grocery store is completely wiped out. And yeah. that's awful. And it's crazy. And it does like... It makes you panic. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, it, it makes you, or at least I, I know from my perspective, when I saw that, I'm like, well, I definitely need to buy some extra stuff because yeah. it might not be here next yeah. week kind yeah. of thing, you know? And I mean, like, obviously the suppliers are not going to be able to fucking keep up with demand and stuff, so. And we've got some food, but, like, we need some stuff. So I was going to go to the store today and get yeah. just, like, maybe, like, chicken and turkey and some stuff for some dinners, but yeah. am I? I don't know. And that was that was the other kind of bizarre thing is uh all like the vast majority of red meat yeah. completely gone. Yeah. But like chicken was just like a little bit low and like <laughs> Yeah, I know Allie. Is Allie everybody has having extreme, a cookout? <laughs> yeah, Allie has an extremely furrowed brow at me. <laughs> uh but but yeah, I mean it's it was just I don't it's get just it. it's been really fascinating to watch how how people are oh, yeah. reacting to this stuff yeah. and and uh so i did want to mention this in regards to like people running out of stock of of different stuff yeah uh one of my buddies who's a pharmacist up in michigan um shout out to nathan if you are uh if you listen to this episode yeah um he was talking about how he's been uh watching kind of the order that the the different uh whatever different products have been kind of taken and yeah. like whatever because it, it's been like this domino effect yeah. for, for different stuff you can't help but be fascinated to watch like how how this actually plays out like in like stuff. a cultural like mm -hmm. we're watching weird history be made yeah we and are. i mean 100 percent, this yeah. is going down in the books yeah. kind of thing because this is this is this has gotten to the point to where uh i mean when when shit gets awry to the point to where the stock market is affected, um, I feel like that's one of those things that it's like, yeah, okay, you know, because yeah. because that's that's a pretty, that's big, pretty big indicator yeah. that, that shit is going down. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but he was talking about how he started a list of the different products that they started running out of. And, uh, and so I just wanted to, uh, first of all, give him a shout out. And second of all, uh, go through his list real quick. There's only about 10 things. Um, but he said, uh, it was uh, the masks first, then they moved on to hand sanitizer, then rubbing alcohol. And speaking to the rubbing alcohol, my, my folks had actually gone up to Virginia to, to visit some family and they went out to try to find some isopropyl alcohol. It's been gone. And they were like, dude, we, we had to drive to multiple different stores just to get like a couple bottles. Yeah. And I mean, obviously everybody's putting limits on, yeah. on sanitation products and stuff at this point. But um, this was kind of a weird one. After the rubbing alcohol, they went on to aloe gel. That's what people are making hand sanitizer out of, oh. rubbing alcohol and aloe gel. Oh, no shit. I yeah. mean, that makes sense. I've but seen like, a couple of recipes, kind of recipes or whatever going around <laughs> yeah. for it, and um, it's like rubbing alcohol, aloe gel. Uh-huh. It's got like lavender essential oil, and I'm like, you don't fucking need that. <laughs> are we going for utility, or are we going for a nice little scent? <laughs> like, I don't really know the purpose of the aloe gel. I guess it's... It does something. It probably helps it. I think it's just moisturizer. It probably kind of thing. I mean, because just alcohol would dry your hands out so much. I think, but it also may like help the alcohol to stay on your hand longer or some things. I I don't know, but something like that. Um, Then they moved on to bulk water, uh, toilet paper, paper towels, thermometers, Sudafed, and then zinc. Which I, I'm not really Why sure. Why Sudafed? I, I mean, I, there's no purpose other than treating symptoms of, you know, but, whatever. Hell, I'd probably need some fucking Sudafed at this point. But you that wouldn't my treat congestion. the coronavirus, yeah. though, right? Well, see, but that's that's what's so fascinating about all this stuff is it's like uh, uh, we actually had some uh, people over last night, including Allie and her oh. husband, <laughs> and we were hanging out, and uh, one of my buddies, Corey... He uh, he was like, man, I went to Lowe's to pick up some stuff, and I just see this guy walking around Lowe's with an armful of Lysol spray cans. Dude. And he's like, so this, this shows you, like, two things. This guy came to Lowe's, maybe not even planning. Well, obviously, he wasn't planning to get that because he was like, he didn't, he didn't have, a, have a buggy. Yeah, he didn't have a buggy. He didn't have a basket. Yeah. He didn't have anything like that. And and so then he's like, oh shit, I need to buy all this Lysol. So he just scoops a fucking armload of it and is like decides to purchase it. And that's I feel like that's what a lot of people are doing. It's just like, this panic buying. If I buying. come across some Lysol, I will grab some because mm-hmm. I don't have any at the moment. I've got some Clorox wipes and that's yeah. fine. But like, yeah, I'll pick up some Lysol. But I'm not going to drive to every store. And if I find it. I'm not going to buy all they have. I'm going to buy one for the yeah. house. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, this is. And is he is trying of... to resell it or is he <laughs> oh trying to, oh, let's no. get into that. You know what? Let's do that. Let's Are you, do did just I, that. Did I cut off what you were? No, no. Okay. I, I, that was pretty just, much it. It's just, okay. yeah, it's just been fascinating to yeah. watch what people have started panic buying. Kind of thing, so. <gasps> so this story made the rounds uh, yesterday, Saturday the 14th. Mm-hmm. It came out on the New York Times and I saw it everywhere. Everybody like, has reposted I had a handful those. of friends send it to me. Yeah. I saw a few people post it on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like also like people were on everywhere, Twitter, everywhere talking about it. Yeah. Um, these coronavirus price gouging opportunist assholes. <laughs> Dude, it is, it is real. And these <sighs> motherfuckers like, oh my God. Also, I finally caved in and subscribed to the New York Times this week because you have to take what they say with a grain of salt, but they do have a lot of good coverage of stuff. Yeah. And then I swear, like, <laughs> that wasn't about the virus. It was some somehow a non-virus related story that i was finally like i'm so sick of this paywall and it went on sale for a dollar a week again so i'm gonna do it and then the next day they were like everything coronavirus related we're taking the paywall off of and i'm like great good i don't need that now but fine (laughs) yeah but anyway so what is your refund policy (laughs) (laughs) so for right now new york times basically has no paywall because all they have is coronavirus stuff so just fyi (laughs) y'all um I I know everybody like at least skimmed this story and got mad and then shared it with people, but like yeah. I really read it and like took notes and shit. Yeah. So these two dudes in Chattanooga named Matt and Noah Colvin, they started buying up all the hand sanitizer they could find on March first. 
Then Noah drove 1,300 miles across Tennessee and Kentucky buying more and also buying antibacterial wipes, usually from smaller stores in smaller towns. So, like, instead of just buying up everything they could at the mega stores, yeah. they're finding, like, Dollar Trees in yeah. towns that we don't even know when we grew up here. Yeah. Because people aren't hitting them up yet. Yeah. So, Matt stayed home, getting ready for all the pallets of even more wipes and sanitizers that he had ordered, and he started listing them all on Amazon. He posted 300 bottles and immediately sold them for between 8 and $70 each, multiple times more than he Fucking spent insane. on them. Making what he called crazy money. You ever wonder what kind of person like buys up all the trendy things like the kids' toys and then sells them online at a huge markup? Because it's this asshole. This motherfucker. <laughs> if you were if you were ever looking for a tickle me elbow around Christmas, this guy's got this him. motherfucker's and got it listed for like selling a grand. Them for three hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So next day, Amazon pulled all his shit and a bunch of other people's and suspended some people and warned others that if they continued this, their accounts would be removed. And I didn't know this. This is news to me. eBay started prohibiting any U.S. sales of masks or sanitizer. Good. Good for eBay. Yeah. So. And this is this is one of these few times that you're actually going to probably hear Allie and I being like, good on these companies. Yeah, I was just going like... to say, like, <laughs> when when have I ever thought, good job, eBay. Yeah, or good job, <laughs> Amazon. Jesus, dude. Yeah. But... So now your boy has 17,700 bottles of sanitizer and has no idea where to sell them. Have you tried? I know this is wild, but have you tried selling them through a reasonable fucking dollar amount? Have you tried that? Yeah, right. Uh, here's a quote from him. It's oh. been a huge amount of whiplash from being in a situation where what I've got coming and going could potentially put my family in a really good place financially to what the heck am I going to do with all this? You know, you do hate that for him. It's just real unfortunate. I've got a suggestion. He can shove every one of all those bottles. All up his ass. <laughs> all up his ass, man. <laughs> Bend over. I'll show you where to put the, the 17,000 bottles. <laughs> so the New York Times estimated that there's probably thousands of sellers in this situation, which checks out if you've tried to buy anything at the store recently. Yeah. yeah. So Amazon, and in keeping with our good job, Amazon. Yeah. Um, they said they have recently removed hundreds of thousands of listings and suspended thousands of sellers' accounts for price gouging related to the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And sites like Amazon and eBay have given rise to a growing industry of independent sellers who snatch up discounted or hard-to-find items in stores to post them online and sell them around the world. Yeah. Like... I get that there's, like, weird vintage shit and people go looking for that. And, mm -hmm. like, that's a different thing. Like, I feel like to find, like, a single cool find in a thrift store yeah. and turn a little profit off of it is one thing. Yeah. But this is bullshit. Well, I mean, this is literally definitive profiteering. Yes. Period. And this is... And I thought that it was fucking illegal. It is in a lot of states. Apparently, it's state by state. Oh, really? And okay. states have different rules about it. Um, we'll get to that a little further down. <laughs> yeah. So they basically look for anything they can sell at a heavy markup and uh. pandemic turns out to be a great opportunity. Mm. So they saw what the popular searches were. And when they saw like, you can just look up what Amazon's most popular, popular searches are. Mm. And plus Google trends. I'm yeah. Sure Google that, trends and yeah. stuff. So when they saw Purell and masks and Clorox wipes climbing the charts, they started getting what they could. Yeah. Um, wait, so, um, and I don't know if you looked into this at all. So how, yeah. how would they go about finding out what popular searches were on Amazon? Just, um, New York times did some research for their story yeah. from a site called jungle scout uh -huh. and it like analyzes historical prices. Oh, cool. okay. So, I mean, that's, I think that data is just out there. Like yeah. I think Amazon's open about it. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, and you can see like the the pricing, not just like how much is selling, but like for what prices and stuff. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of charts and stuff. It's pretty cool. Gotcha. Um, and at the high prices, people were still buying a whole bunch of the products. Amazon gets a cut of about 15% and eBay gets about 10% depending on the price on the seller. Mm -hmm. But now all this stuff has changed. Yeah. And uh, Amazon as of Wednesday, started restricting sales of any coronavirus-related products from certain sellers. 
Price gouging is a clear violation of our policies. It's unethical. And in some areas, it's illegal, Amazon said in a statement. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they also said that they are open to the opportunity to work directly with state attorneys and uh, to, or sorry, state attorney generals to prosecute bad actors. Fuck yes. Good. Because these these people are the ones that are fucking, like, literally creating this problem. Yeah. Period. I so mean, then it, it's a little personal stuff about your dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's 36, and he's a former Air Force technical sergeant. He started selling on Amazon in 2015, developed it into a six-figure career by selling Nike shoes and pet toys and by following the trends. So what he got started with during this pandemic, yeah. early February, when he saw it starting to move in China, yeah, there was a liquidation firm near him uh-huh. that was selling 2,000 things they called a pandemic pack. Uh-huh. Each one had 50 face masks, four bottles of hand sanitizer, and a thermometer. They were five bucks a pack. He haggled them down to 350 a pack, and he bought them all. Then he sold them all for uh, between 40 and 50 each, sometimes higher. He wouldn't say what his profit is, but I did the very basic math. Yeah. If he sold them for 40 each, he made $73,000 of profit. Jesus, dude. And that's his lower estimate. Yeah. And sure, yeah, like, he had to pay shipping costs and stuff like that. So, like, fine, factor that in. But, like, still, that's his lower estimate. I'm sure he made more than that. Yeah. Even with shipping figure in. Yeah. So, he got all fired up and he kept going. And then another dude in Pennsylvania bought up about 10,000 masks in stores. And after Amazon's cut and all of his costs, he made a $25,000 profit. So this is this is kind of a, a question I I'm, I'm don't think that... I Maybe you can answer it. I'll try. But um, it seems like if somebody's buying that quantity of something, and it's like a private whatever... a, a because he's not buying it probably through a company or some kind of facade that he's a, a company, right? Because it's like the way 10, it worded it was he masks? bought ten thousand masks in stores, so he may have bought those oh, spread okay. across several gotcha, stores, gotcha. not just one purchase yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but like you know, this guy's reselling. Yeah, well, it just seems like it would. It you know, well. It just seems like there would be some kind of red flag that would go up. That it's right? like okay. Why are you buying all this shit? You know, kind of maybe thing. different things will change because of all this. Hopefully. Maybe and there hopefully will put be red flags. a little bit yeah. closer yeah. kind of thing by these, these companies. But. So, um, another dude in Ohio also bought about 10,000 masks at some stores. He bought each 10-pack for about 20 bucks and sold most for about 80 bucks, mm-hmm. And sold some for as much as 125 And he said they were selling as soon as he could list them. Yeah. Yeah. And he estimates he made about 40 grand in profit. Dude, I saw a, a little anecdote on, um, I think it was in, it was in like the comments of like, because I actually, I, I pulled a couple comments yeah. about the Yahoo yeah. coverage, or yeah. well, which they were basically, basically just reiterated yeah. what New York Times did. Yeah. But um, somebody was talking about how um, they actually purchased a bottle of Purell. Yeah. Uh, hand sanitizer on Amazon, and uh, they said that they got this bottle in the mail that was like three quarters full, and they somebody had just put like a fucking Purell label on the front, and they were like, "Dude, I don't even know what the fuck is actually in this bottle." Yeah, and I'm immediately returning this. Yeah. like what in the actual fuck? Yeah, the Amazon marketplace has. Really There's some sketchy shit fucking, out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty wild. You never know. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so now this guy has a thousand more masks on order, but he's not sure what to do with them. Because, like, he said, Amazon has been vague about what constitutes price gouging, and it's scaring away sellers who don't want to risk losing their ability to sell. I it's scaring away people know. who know they're doing fuckery. Exactly. <laughs> The fucking guilty dog barks, man. (laughs) Uh, So here's the state-by-state kind of thing. Um, 
to a lot of people, including regulators, these sellers are sitting on stockpiles of medical supplies during a pandemic, mm. which is at least unethical, if not illegal, in, yeah. in your state. Yeah, yeah. Um, attorney general's offices in California, Washington State, and New York are all investigating price gouging related to the coronavirus. California's price gouging law bars sellers from increasing prices by more than 10% after officials declare an emergency. That's good. That is a hard and fast line. That's yeah. that is an exact. Yeah, New York's prevents sellers from charging a quote unconscionably excessive price during emergencies. Love to imply that people have consciences. Yeah, like Pe- people need a little bit more direction than that. Yeah, <laughs> I I hate laws that are just open to interpretation. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't know if you ever really heard about. Um, like when when porn laws first kind of started getting made, uh, they were basically like, "Well, I mean, I know when something's bad when I see it." Yeah, and yeah they're I, like, I "That's that. that can't be how I the remember. that can't be how it works." Yeah, yeah, like yeah, no. <laughs> um, when it involves furries <laughs> is when I draw the line. <laughs> Who are we to kink shame? <laughs> you're right. You're right. My apologies. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, so, Washington's saying that they are, they believe they can apply the state's consumer protection law to sue platforms or sellers, even if they aren't in Washington, as long as they're trying to sell to people in Washington. Gotcha. That's neat. Huh. What did you start to say? Um, so I was going to mention something just before you got, uh, too, yeah. we got too yeah. far away yeah. from it, but you mentioned that he, he was in the Air Force uh-huh. and there was a comment regarding that oh yeah and i just wanted to i wanted to read yeah, this yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how accurate this is but i'm not gonna lie we all I, love the comments it's yeah it was it was pretty awesome yeah um this person said uh i'm embarrassed that they mentioned he was an uh, an air force technical sergeant if he retired at the rank i can understand why his statement quote i honestly feel like it's a public service end quote he added uh, quote, I'm being paid for my public service, end quote. Yeah, uh, that's in this article. I oh, was, yes. was going to bring that, yeah. So they said uh, it's it's just the type of thinking that probably kept him from progressing in his uh, Air Force career and ah. forced his retirement at 20 years since he wasn't worth keeping on the Air Force payroll at that low rank, only receiving two promotions in the last 16 years of service. This guy? That's that's what they were talking about, uh <laughs> this guy's 36. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> his Oh, his did he did he retire out of it at 20? No. 20? You can't retire at 20? Well, no, 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 I'm saying like out of the Air Force kind of thing. I don't think so. That's a good point. Uh-oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this comment does not track. This, this does not this does not uh, roll out, man. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty lost. Okay, uh, never mind. Keep going. Maybe I can make sense of it. <laughs> uh, maybe they're comparing it to somebody else. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Um. So I don't know. So he does not believe he was price gouging. He says people forget that his impri- his price includes his labor and Amazon's fees plus shipping. Because okay, it is alcohol based, and there's restrictions on that to yeah. ship because it's, it's hazardous. Yeah, it's considered a hazardous. So material. there's that. So he says charging twenty bucks for two bottles of Purell that retail for a dollar each is reasonable. Is it? Is so it? I've got a comment yeah, on that. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this other person said uh, current price gouging. Yes, laws. this is my next thing. Oh, is it? Go oh, ahead, no, 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 no. I don't want to steal your thunder. So well, in in the article it says current price gouging laws are not built for today's day and age. Yes. Mister Colvin said they are built for Billy Bob's gas station doubling the amount he charges for gas during a hurricane. Listen, <laughs> hello, you are the pot, and this is the kettle, and y'all are both black as hell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody bring this man a mirror so he can see that he is, in fact, the <laughs> Billy Bob he is referring to also during a crisis. Like, mm. you're trying to say, like, raising gas prices during a hurricane is shitty? You're doing the same thing! And that's what the, this person was like, dude, shipping a $2 item does not cost $14. No! No! <laughs> Um, oh, and then he said, he, uh, someone asked him about the morality of hoarding products that can prevent the spread of the virus. 
He said he was just fixing the inefficiencies in the marketplace. Some areas of the country need these products more than others. He's helping send the supply toward the demand. I mean, this dude is just like a fucking psychopath. He's just making right? all uh, the sociopath. excuses. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he said there's a crushing, overwhelming demand in certain cities right now. The Dollar General in the middle of nowhere outside Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky, doesn't have that demand. He thought about it more. And then he said, I honestly feel like it's a per. I can't talk today. (laughs) I honestly feel like it's a public service. I'm being paid for my public service. And then he said he'd now probably try to sell it locally. If he can make a slight profit, that's fine. But I'm not looking to be in a situation where I make the front page of the news for being that guy who hoarded 20,000 bottles of sanitizer that I'm selling for 20 times what they cost me. And then at the very, very end, there was a note that said, after the Times published this article on Saturday morning, Mr. Colvin said he was exploring ways to donate all the supplies. Sure you are. Sure, dude. Sure you are. I'm I'm sure he's exploring it at uh, breakneck speed. Yeah. (laughs) What a dick. I mean, the... And there's there's all these, there's literally a, no way to spin this in no, a positive manner. No, like no shit. You, I don't understand how, what this guy's. You are thinking. trying to profit off of people's fear. One hundred percent. Like one hundred percent. That is. There's no. Don't try to say you're doing a public fucking service. Yeah. And like, so there's pictures of him like standing in front of pallets of all these supplies. Yeah. Looking forlorn. I don't. I mean, feel sorry for you no. at all. I, I hope this motherfucker is still selling hand sanitizer in fucking 2050. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, people that buy into a big trend mm-hmm. and then they can't profit off of it. Like, say if you got really into Beanie Babies <laughs> and then they I don't know just... what you're talking about. No, don't look never. in that closet behind you, Al. <laughs> I feel bad for people like that that get yeah. duped in some way and, you know, that feel like, yeah, that does suck. Like, you put money into something you think would be worth something and now it's not. Well, it sucks, but that's like... That's not... Yeah, it's, that's... It's a gamble. Yeah, you, know? you gambled on it and yeah. it fell through and I, I am sorry for you yeah. a little. It was still a weird thing. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> but this guy, I'm not sorry for this guy. No. no. And... This, this guy is... The headline made it sound like we were gonna approach it in a way that we should feel sorry for him and the article was written pretty <laughs> factually but also pretty much like sir we do not care about yeah. your feelings <laughs> basically basically they all but said so you everybody thinks you're a complete and utter asshole <laughs> tell us why you don't think you're an asshole <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah it was so pretty good fucked, man god so um let's see so uh <laughs> Stepping a little, well, still, still in the vein of coronavirus. I feel like, honestly, I don't know why this, this all. I'm absolutely fascinated with the fucking porn industry and like adult <laughs> entertainment shit. We do love a good sex story. Yeah, yeah, and and it, I think that it's really funny. Oh that, yeah, like, dude, they have embraced the coronavirus. Yeah. To the nth degree, yeah. kind of thing. So <laughs> I pulled this article, uh, and I'm I'm actually going to ask uh, Allie a question in a little bit. Oh God, because uh, I was not familiar with this, but uh, but anyway, so I pulled this uh, this article from the the Next Web. Porn sites have turned coronavirus into a viral marketing scheme, and it's working. <laughs> so, I love it. So in the past thirty days alone, there were six point eight million coronavirus searches on Pornhub. What? <laughs> yeah. The hunt for COVID-19 themed porn peaked on March 5th with over 1.5 searches in one day. So <laughs> they said they would go on to say viewers in Slovakia, Bulgaria, Ireland, Malaysia, and Serbia seem to be particularly fascinated by viral porn. <laughs> um this is this is just absolutely bizarre to me. Uh, they actually uh, uh, they actually go on to to say that uh, there and there, there's a there's a thumbnail or a photo in this this article and it's literally the the title of the video was a cure for the coronavirus is getting fucked by a pog. I've never heard of a pog before. P a w g. Oh yeah. What is that? Oh. 
Oh. How do you explain that? Is it? Ooh, it stands for. It's like a pretty ass white girl or something like that. Oh, I bet it's that's something I bet like that's that. What it is. See, Allie is like just this. Dude, I like, know all the things cache of, of like, weird internet. shit. Like yeah, I know useless shit. <laughs> but uh, but so um, so that brings me to my question. I'm sorry, fat ass white girl with a ph. Oh, fat got ass you. White got girl. you. It refers to the body shape of a specific type of female. <laughs> Thank I, you, Pinterest, I, for this answer. <laughs> I love the internet. I love it so much. It is so great. <sighs> um, so this brings me to uh, a side note in this article. Oh boy, have you? Are you familiar with Rule Thirty Four? Yes, <laughs> I've never heard of this. Rule Thirty Four has yeah. been around. I'm not exaggerating. At least fifteen years. Yeah. Well, so th- I think that they said. Uh, I think that it went back to like the 2000 like six. Say, nailed something it. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, a 2003. There you they're, go. They're thinking. And for the uninitiated, which I was this morning, I love this concept. There is porn of it, no exceptions. Yeah. Period. Like, so. if you can name a thing, there is porn of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that is an amazing fucking rule, dude. Yeah. I think that is so. I just. Society is a fucking incredibly fascinating thing, man. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so. Um, so basically, as of the writing of this article, which was do 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 do, uh, it was written on Pi Day. Um, yeah. So uh, they said that uh, there are over 320 videos on Pornhub regarding virus or coronavirus porn, and then 13 on X Hamster. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, uh, the same coronavirus porn kind of stuff. But um, also, I wanted to. I posted this in the the Facebook group that they also gave it a shout out in this article. Uh, the Japanese adult content distributor Soft on Demand made 200 smut flicks available for free during the pandemic. <laughs> I, I think At the this, end of that, it said that yeah. their server had crashed and you couldn't get to the that, site. That's what they said. They said that it, it got so popular that it completely, like, they couldn't uh, they authenticate new accounts fast enough and their, like, website just fucking shit out. Honestly, <laughs> so, I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> Um, and then they 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 go on in this article to talk about how apparently there's uh there's been research floating around. I have not looked into this. I I take it with a grain of salt that masturbation can boost your immune immune system. Oh wow! So you know what, dude? If do your you, part, I guess. Do, do your part. Uh, do your part. Rub one out. So, uh, yeah, man absolutely bizarre wow like it's just it's just been this this is just fascinating to me absolutely fascinating (laughs) but um so let's see where where we where would we like to go from here um i don't know let's see i've got have you heard of the stay the fuck home movement i know i haven't okay so I came across it, um, I think referenced in like a Newsweek article or something. Yeah. And I clicked through their site and it's, uh, it's really cool. Like it's just Mm -hmm. staythefuckhome.com. It has just a lot of like easy to understand facts about COVID-19. Yeah. And it also says officials are pretty much reacting too slowly to do much to prevent the spread. Mm -hmm. So they say, to put it bluntly, stay the fuck home. Yeah. And this this all kind of goes under that umbrella of flatten the curve. Right? Yes, it's very much the flatten the curve thing. Yeah. And it's also I was writing my notes up on this at a Starbucks. So like, who am I? <laughs> and I'm, Which you you were talking about Starbucks was rolling stuff out. They're um, they're prepared to. Uh, they've made a statement. Well, they already like a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. uh said that they're not letting people bring in their own reusable cups and mugs yeah just in another i mean an overabundance of caution you know exactly and uh but they're they're prepared to start limiting seating so Mm -hmm. that we're social distancing yeah 
and then possibly to turn some of them to drive through only and also yeah. do deliveries and stuff just yeah. just to do their part and yeah. they said they would take that community by community so it won't be like they have decided that for the whole country yeah, at least not at first it might kind of stuff. yeah but, but yeah um i went to ulta yesterday and they had a big sign out front that was like if you don't feel good and like you have services scheduled for a haircut or a brow wax or something mm -hmm. please reschedule really? and it was also like also we're not doing any testers of anything right now if you want to test something speak to an associate <laughs> and i'm I like mean, it makes sense th that's the thing is like i feel like there's a lot of pretty easily implemented things yeah. that that it's just it's not going to disrupt a whole yeah. lot of shit yeah it's not you know it's not like every, nobody's gonna be able to get their fucking coffee or whatever i don't know stuff well yet i mean we'll say um but in, but in italy it is that way <laughs> yeah well and that's 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 something else and, and i can't remember if i well we ha really haven't covered the, the italy stuff at no. all no. Um, I think it's it's going to be really uh, really interesting to watch how they go about. Like, obviously, they've got a countrywide quarantine kind of thing going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, and but I think that it's it's I think it's been fascinating to watch because why has it blown up so hardcore in Italy? Like, I don't. Know. I think. It just got spread so quickly there, yeah. and it's such an exponential growth thing that once it really starts spreading, yeah. you're fucked. Yeah. And I don't know what specifically made Italy that bad, but yeah. I think it had the potential to do that here, but a lot of these closings and reschedulings and stuff are yeah. going to help that. Yeah, yeah. But... I don't well, know, I mean, man. I mean, when I was out shopping yesterday, like the crowds were about normal most oh, places. Really? Yeah, oh, like wow. okay. um, Starbucks. When I was sitting there riding, had a fair amount of people, and they were you know coming in and leaving and stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, it it felt like a normal Just Saturday. A normal Saturday. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if people really are staying home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and the the other thing is is it's you know comparing comparing these countries that it has just like completely gotten out of control yeah. to the other countries that it's like for instance South Korea there's a really cool thing trending on um Twitter right now about patient 31 mm -hmm. and it goes to a story on Reuters um it's it's very graphic heavy so I'll probably post it in the Facebook group but it okay. it pretty much like the the trending thing is patient 31 and it said patient 31 did not adhere to social distancing mm -hmm. and they exposed like 1200 people to it or oh, something wow. like that. And it yeah. just, it basically shows you how quickly it could be spread if yeah. you're, and it shows the timeline of here's what they did over three weeks. Like they went to church and they stayed two hours. They went to a buffet at a hotel. They, yeah. uh, rode in a taxi yeah. they got in a car wreck so then they were hospitalized so then they did this and this and they like had so many contacts uh, yeah. and if you're not distancing yourself you're potentially exposing a ton of people yeah you know well and i also i kind of wonder if um like public transit like places that have like a whole lot of public transit yes. you know yeah. and like obviously new york and like the sub subway yeah. system you can't or keep that stuff clean yeah i mean yeah. it's 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 impossible even if you're wiping it down every 30 minutes yeah. you're talking about like yeah. fucking hundreds of thousands of people well maybe not hundreds tens of thousands yeah. of people using it you yeah. know using these services and stuff this uh the stay the stay the fuck home thing they have a self-quarantine manifesto and it's it's a list of like 12 things and mm -hmm. they're like don't panic but be alert wash your hands often and practice good cough and sneeze medicine i won't read them all they're they're yeah. pretty basic but number nine is don't use public transportation if not absolutely necessary yeah I mean, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Stay away from but social see, gatherings is, and events. This is what's also kind of uh, bizarre to me is like, it seems like there's a decent bit of reporting that it's like, hey, don't panic. Just be, you know, yeah. be alert, be, you know, this, that, and the other. And yet... Being I, told not to panic doesn't help anything. Very, very true. You know, very like... Very true, yeah. Like, it's like telling a little kid, like... This isn't gonna hurt, and like they see the needle coming, and they're gonna be like, "I hate shots." Yeah, like yeah. telling me it's not gonna hurt, I don't believe you. I see it, but, but you know, I, you know, and I I agree about the the panic thing. Yeah, but, but like it's like okay, just 
practice better hygiene kind yeah. of shit. It's like that yeah. that really is uh which I I don't think I've mentioned this before on the show, but I, I think what what this uh this pandemic is really showing us in the United States at least and probably basically all uh developed countries we're not as hygienic as we think we are. No. Kind of thing. No. Like you know the this just hacking and coughing, not covering your mouth, not yeah. washing your hands as much as you need to and yeah. stuff. That that I mean this is normal shit that you should be doing. Yeah. And yet, you know, people are just spazzing the fuck out, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's And I, like I just, you yeah. have to touch things in yeah. like for example, yeah. I ate at Panda Express. Uh-huh. And I like I I got there and I ate. Mm-hmm. And when I was leaving, I was like, you know, I'll wash my hands. Just just thinking of it, I'll wash my hands. Yeah. So I go in the bathroom. Um, the bathroom's weirdly laid out. It's like a single stall. Yeah. Wash my hands. Dry my hands. Have to touch the the twisty door handle to get out of the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And there's nowhere to throw the paper towel if I use the paper towel for it. So I just did it with my clean hand. And I'm like, that kind of just defeated the whole purpose, right? I've, that's that's one thing I've never understood about uh, places that it, the, the trash can should be literally right by so the door, so that I could throw so it. That you can, yeah. yeah, so that you can use the, the yeah. your paper towel or whatever, yeah. you know. Which I mean, th- there was something else, and a lot of places don't have paper towels; they just have the hand dryers. Yeah. And then you have to get out of the bathroom. And then you have to get out of the bathroom. God. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's completely counterintuitive. Yeah, but I bet after all of this shit. I bet some of that stuff's going to get revamped, man. Surely, I would, th- or I would think. But then, then again, I mean, my God, we're f- people who don't remember history and are <laughs> doomed to repeat it, right? So, uh, so um, is uh, you got anything oh, else? Um, it kind of just said like, you know, you don't have to do all these things, but mm-hmm. every action that you do helps. Yeah, and. Yeah. One thing that they pointed out that I thought was cool, they they also said exponential growth always seems slow at first mm-hmm. and can lead to crazy high numbers in a really short time. Yeah. Like these charts that you see just are like flat, 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 and then just straight up. Yeah. That's how it's happening. Yeah. Well, because I mean, it's, it's basically, uh, well, it's not basically, it is exponential. Yeah. It's like a two to four to eight to yeah. 16. Kind yeah. Of shit, so. But one thing that they pointed out that I've not really heard anywhere, uh-huh. and they like, they had like, Links to scientific studies and stuff. It's more contagious than the flu. Mm -hmm. It is more deadly than the flu. Mm -hmm. And an estimated 15 to 20% of infected individuals suffer from severe symptoms that require medical attention. Mm -hmm. I don't think people are thinking any of those things. Yeah. People are acting like the flu is worse. The flu kills more people. Yeah. But like it doesn't. Like this is this this if you get this, you're more likely to die. Well, and I think something something else that that's kind of you know these these comparisons being thrown around with the flu and you know COVID nineteen yeah is uh, we have decades of data yeah. with seasonal flu stuff yeah you know what I'm saying so yeah. so we're comparing apples to oranges yes. just in the sense that we don't have decades of data about this we literally have months of yeah. data yeah you know we don't Barely. even have a fucking year yeah so. Um, so I mean, it's really it's to to take that to take this small pool of data and extrapolate it out. You know, yeah. I mean, dude, the further you get away from that small pool, the less accurate these models are going to be. Yeah. So, and that's what that's what is uh, scary to me is the fact that it's like we. I feel like a lot of people are making these assumptions that are based off next to nothing. Yeah. You know, so. I don't know. Just kind of, kind of some bizarre, uh, bizarre stuff to say the least. Yeah. Um, now, on a lighter note. Good. Um, the FDA is, uh, uh, or they have approved a newer testing method because uh, basically, the FDA under uh, times of uh, stress and duress, I guess. Um, they are able to fast track like medications and testing supplies and stuff like that for FDA approval, and that's exactly what they've done with uh, with this. the uh, The company Roche uh, Pharmaceuticals they have actually uh, developed a new testing method 
um, or at least a, a new test that can in- increase the rate of testing patients uh, by up to 10 times compared to the current methods used. Wow. So that's that's huge. That's I good. Mean, like, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And so, so that should be rolling out, uh, or it, it already is. They've actually said that um, – there are roughly 110 uh, of these machines across both generations. And by generations, they're talking about how they have different generations of the testing kits. And, uh, and so they said basically there's 100, roughly 110 of these machines across both generations available in the U.S. And that more are being installed uh, in, quote, significant uh, volume in recent weeks as response efforts ramp up. Yeah. So. So increasing, you know, the the capacity for testing and all this stuff. And I know that um, they're trying to uh, they're trying to basically have uh, set up um, drive through testing in a bunch of these, you know, like Walmart parking lots yeah. and stuff. And and I mean, like, dude, every like you said, every little bit is going to help. You yeah. Know? And I mean, I I think that uh, I don't know. I, I I hope that they can. You know, I hope this helps to put people's minds at ease and stuff. And I mean, just just remember that it's it's one of these things that just take the precautions, stay home if you can. You know, whatever. Don't don't panic buy all this all this shit. You know, yeah. but um, but yeah. So excuse me. Um, just uh, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully they're going to be able to roll this stuff out uh, as quickly as possible. And uh, the social distancing thing is, uh, I think, is going to be a big key. So, yeah. Um, which, uh, speaking of that, uh, kind of goes into this other article that I that I pulled from The Verge that uh, AMC and Regal, uh, the theater companies, we're actually starting to cap movie theater uh, attendance at 50% wow. to allow for social distancing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, I mean that's that's cool. I don't at this point, I don't think I'd be going to the fucking movie theater. No, man. <laughs> Cuz it's, you know, any anything that's going to put you in close vicinity with the public, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm going to be I'm probably going to be sta- staying away from it. Yeah. So, but they're they're already taking like super big hits uh for um, or in in attendance for the, for these company or these uh, theaters and stuff. Yeah, so. just wild stuff, man. <laughs> Absolutely wild. Um, so there was something else that I kind of wanted to mention, just because I thought that this was kind of a fascinating, uh, I guess, byproduct of the coronavirus stuff. But um, and I didn't realize that this existed, but it completely makes sense that it would. Yeah. So. With the concern with the coronavirus stuff, um, the stock market has obviously been affected. It's been a mess, you know. And uh, and we we were looking at uh, some pretty sizable drops. Um, so this article that I pulled from uh, NPR, they said six minutes after trading began on uh, the New York Stock Exchange on Monday, uh, it was suddenly halted. That's when the S and P 500 index had plummeted seven percent, and market wide circuit breakers kicked in. Did you know that circuit the stock market had circuit breakers? I feel like none of us knew those were a thing till this week, right? Well, and the 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 thing is, is like my parents knew because of basically the, this thing that they referenced back in '97, the the first uh, stock market crash. Obviously, not like fucking Black Friday or anything, but. Yeah. Um, this was back in October 27th of 1997 when the Dow Jones uh, industrial average fell 7.2%. And so what they have in, in, in stated uh, now um, is basically they have a level 1, 2, and 3 uh, circuit breakers, mm-hmm. for, for lack of a better term. Um, so the level 1 is a drop of 7% from the prior day's closing of the S&P 500 triggers a 15-minute trading halt which i thought that it was kind of funny because i'm like 15 minutes does that really does that really help anything like man also this week i realized i don't know shit about the stock market like anytime i think i vaguely sort of get it (laughs) something like this happens and i'm like huh well never heard of that back to the drawing board (laughs) yeah Yeah, so uh but dude it is it is it is like a tried and true uh system that totally actually works because they they 
they they put a 15 minute trading halt yeah in the the market recently yeah and it totally like yeah. slowed it down you know granted the market is fucking all over the place at this point yeah. but um but anyway so uh the level 2 is a drop of 13% uh, and that triggers an additional fifteen minute halt, and then uh, trading trading is not halted on in either cases, the level one or the level two, if it's uh, if it, the drop occurs after three twenty five, which I think the market closes at four. Is it four or four thirty? Or do you know? I don't know. I meant to look that up this week. Too. I think it, I want to say it's four. I think but, it opens at like nine thirty or some yeah, weird it's shit. Yeah, like nine thirty to four or some shit like that. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, something around there. I should have yeah. looked it up. My apologies, <laughs> listeners. Um, but anyway, and then you've got uh, the level three, which is a drop of twenty percent from previous the previous day's trading uh, prices, and that triggers a halt for the rest of the day of trading. Which yeah. I think over the course of like basically like a couple weeks, the Dow has tanked like close to 25 yeah. uh, percent or something like that or 20 percent maybe but um but i just thought that that was kind of kind of interesting that you know i mean it makes totally makes sense yeah because obviously you know we don't we, people just like people are panic buying in the grocery stores people are panic trading yeah. when they see this shit yeah. like tanking you know and panic selling and yeah. stuff so um pretty cool though little little mention as to the economic effects of uh of the the coronavirus stuff because i think ultimately in in my opinion i think that's going to be the uh the biggest um i don't know the biggest effect that we're gonna see i don't think it's going to be you know obviously i'm not discounting the the health and aspect of all this stuff but i think once all this plays out yeah I think global economics are going to have taken a sizable hit. Oh God, yeah. So yeah, um, but yeah, just uh, some some kind of crazy shit. So mm. um, where we want to head from here? Um, I have a non-virus related thing. Do we yeah, want to take a break? Please, my <laughs> God. <laughs> so I came across this story the other day. Ugh. Sorry, big stretch. Um. Basically, there's been headlines for a decade about millennials killing things. Yes. As in uh, beer and <laughs> napkins yeah. and uh, the diamond Wait, industry. Napkins? I don't know. What? But yeah, that's that's fuck? one of the things. <laughs> this is another one of those stories that has a million links to other stories. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. But, um, but yeah, there's basically all these headlines that are... And I, I saw a really good... Uh, like collage that someone made yeah. that was just a ton of millennials are killing headlines. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but pretty much it's just that we don't have the money to spend on this shit. Like yeah, no shit. It's dude. not usually any sort of like stand that we've taken. It's yeah. that we can't afford these things. Yeah. So um, they murdered napkins. They killed cereal. Buffalo Wild Wings and TGI Fridays. Um, what in the f- I mean, TGI Fridays was just kind of shitty in the first place, I know, place, right? I know. I remember going, to, real quick anecdote <laughs> about TGI Fridays. I remember taking a girl on a date in undergrad to TGI Fridays because we had like a $10 gift card or something yeah. like that. And I was like, oh, TGI Fridays, we'll go get some burgers and like whatever. Yeah. Everything's good. Dude, it was like for two burgers, and I think we each had a beer or something. Yeah. It's like 50 bucks with a tip. Yeah, man. I was like, no wonder these motherfuckers are shuddering. Because like, it's not even good. Like, it's no, not a good burger for no, that price. No, it was like, yeah. It was completely bland as shit and overpriced as shit. Yeah. But anyway, that sorry. sucks. Yeah. I think they killed themselves. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this guy basically said uh, he is a millennial business reporter that covers retail, and he's mitten, written many of these headlines himself. Mm. And it became one of his favorite story genres, a business trend piece with the drama of a murder mystery. <laughs> oh my God. So, and <laughs> he also said, you know, like, people are going to click these damn headlines because yeah. it's more interesting to see millennials have killed the diamond industry versus yeah. diamond sales are down. Which one are you going to click, you oh, know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. So, uh, it's really just that millennials aren't spending money on these things, so sales are down. And... <laughs> 
Reporters became crooked prosecutors, accused of pinning the blame on a beleaguered generation instead of investigating the real cul- culprits. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, for the whole pretty much last decade, it's just been changing trends and truths about the American economy and the rise of social media backlash. Yeah. Um, pretty much said that there was a trend piece in 2013. Mm-hmm saying or trend pieces Mm -hmm. saying that millennials are materialistic but cheap (laughs) so uh they put us as a generation of entitled loafers who expected participation trophies simply for getting out of bed entitled loafers (laughs) i'm an entitled loafer i want to be an entitled loafer (laughs) you you can be an entitled loafer you too can be an entitled (laughs) loafer So, uh, they started using the Millennials Are Killing framing for stories about industries failing to win over those customers. Yeah. So, one headline was, Millennial Generation Could Kill the NFL. Forbes the same year. Is Gen Y's live-at-home lifestyle killing the housing market? (laughs) And in 2014, there was a headline about promiscuous millennials killing McDonald's. Wait, what? Promiscuous, I clicked through and I read that one. Yeah. Just in our sense of we don't have brand loyalty. Not that we're sleeping around, the, but I, in a sense of our lack of brand loyalty, we're oh, sleeping like around. Oh, like we're promiscuous, like, oh, I'm going to have a Big Mac tonight. We're but not devoted having, guess what to I'm our brand. Yeah. Whopper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that makes us promiscuous. I'm like, <laughs> we're also sluts. Like, I mean, just go ahead. I think that's hilarious. Like, that's just a funny word. I've to never use, heard promiscuous right? used in a way that's not sexual. Yeah. So exactly. that was really weird. I thought that, I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> I'm glad funny. you do. Yeah. <laughs> um,. This That's person's funny. first story on millennial murder was in 2016 mm. when they reported that millennials were killing light yogurt. <laughs> what in the but fuck? But it was because we have whatever amount of disposable income, mm-hmm. and if we're not buying the thing, the thing sales go down. Yeah. Boom, we killed it. <laughs> God. It, what it sounds like is marketing companies need to fucking revamp their methods and uh-huh. so that we are actually the target market as yeah. opposed to older generations have you tried putting memes on your light yogurt because <laughs> yeah. we'll buy them then yeah, right <laughs> each cup of yogurt comes with a meme in the bottom like can you partner with netflix <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, that's awesome. uh yeah it was just it was just kind of talking about how basically the millennials killing thing has kind of died off which is cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it did bring up diamonds. It was just simply that millennials didn't have the funds to buy diamonds. Yeah. Like, it wasn't some big mystery. Yeah. And God, uh, the, di- the diamond industry oh, is God. such a, sh- yeah. a sham, dude. So sham. there was a, st- a study from the <laughs> 2018 Federal Reserve that said millennials are less well off than members of earlier generations when they were young. We have learned lower earnings, fewer assets, and less wealth. And we came of age during the Great Recession, yeah. which kneecapped our financial well-being in our early adulthood. Dude, I remember in, in 2008, like yeah. my, my college fund uh, that my parents had started when I was literally born, I was using that to pay for my apartment. Yeah. And, uh, dude, as soon as the market like tanked, yeah. it literally, I, well, I had to move home. Yeah. Period. Because yeah. I, I couldn't I, I couldn't pay my rent, and yeah. I was just like, "Hey, mom and dad, I need to finish this degree, yeah. and I need a place to live." Yeah. Thank you. Uh, they had another thing that said, according to the census, the net worth of Americans under thirty five has fallen by more than a third since nineteen ninety six. That does not surprise me. No, like, um. I mean, I think it's like we're. Healthcare costs a ton more. Mm-hmm. Um, education costs a shit ton more. God, man. And now uh, we're all at... educated and we don't have the, uh, <laughs> yeah. like, we don't have the resume to get hired for the shit we're qualified to, f- to fucking work at, yeah. you know? Oh, dude. It, it is a complete and utter catch-22, man. <laughs> so then we're stuck working service industry jobs. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. My God. 
It's just nuts. So I just I just found this. It popped up on uh, Reddit a second ago. Yeah. This is don't do this, people. <laughs> Suspect wore hazmat suit, sprayed thirteen people with clear liquid in Walmart. Son. <laughs> No, sir. <laughs> so this was in Las Vegas. The The Metro Police and local fire crews uh, went to a Walmart on the west side of town for reports of a suspicious person. And uh, they basically responded just after 8 p.m. And according to the, the police, they uh, there was a voluntary evacuation of the store. They said that there, there was a, a person that was literally dressed in a hazmat suit that sprayed 13 people inside the store with a, quote, clear liquid. And they have no idea what the, currently no idea what the liquid was, or is, I guess. Uh, they said nobody's shown any signs uh, uh, or symptoms, uh, you know, after being sprayed with this stuff. Man. But they said that they, they spoke to a woman on the scene, uh... Who, who, she was actually the one that called the police. And she was going to say he had some clear liquid in, uh, in, in a container with painter's tape and something written on it. He was just spraying unnecessary things in people's person spaces on conveyor belts and, worst of all, by the fresh fr- foods. So he was just walking around the store spraying shit. Jeez. Dude, I'm telling you, there, there are some absolute kooks out there. <sighs> like this, this is just so weird, man. Yeah, we we live in a very very bizarre time, man. man. <laughs> Jeez, but yeah. So uh, the suspect's now in custody, and they said that uh, the police would not say if they're facing any charges as of yet. I mean, you should you get not? charged for some shit, right? That guy that licked the ice cream in the gas station. Yeah, he got he, thirty days of jail. I think. So, yeah, something like that. Something like that. But, like, um, ugh. yeah, dude. Uh, so another lighter story that <laughs> I thought that this was kind of cool. Um, and I'm sure everybody's uh, slowly finding out about this, but NBA players that uh, obviously everybody's known that the, the NBA has been indefinitely suspended, uh, as of now. And, uh, but some NBA players are actually donating money to cover the salaries of arena workers, uh, during this COVID-19 shutdown. This is like one of those like heartwarming stories that it's like yeah. you know what there are still like Decent good people, people out there yeah. you know but uh, so basically since since the the entertainment industry has all but been shuttered um, the, we, they had some uh, different basketball players uh, NBA players for instance Kevin Love announced he was donating a uh, hundred thousand dollars to his team's arena support staff. And called on others to make similar gestures. Uh, in addition to Kevin Love, uh, Blake Griffin also said that he was just gonna he was just following suit. Quote: um, He didn't elaborate, but uh, media outlets reported that he would donate uh, about a hundred thousand dollars to staff or to the staff at uh, Detroit's Little Caesars Arena. Um, also, I believe the, let's see, it was the Golden State Warriors, um, their ownership, players, and coaches are planning to contribute $1 million to, to Disaster Relief Fund for Chase Center employees. So, kind of cool that everybody's uh, looking out for, for everybody else, to a degree, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, so so we have, we're... we're we we're seeing both ends of the spectrum. You've got the what Kevin Colvin on the one side, and then you've got these guys that are helping <laughs> support arena workers and stuff from the NBA. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Pretty pretty heartwarming, I guess Good. you could say. Good. Um, let's see. Also, I wanted to mention this thing. If if you are uh, deciding to self quarantine and all that jazz, you don't have to do it alone. You can get your friends to download a fun little video app <laughs> that uh, you can chat with and have uh, remote happy hours and stuff with your friends. Uh, which Megan and I actually not uh, not because of virus concerns, but. We we are supreme nerds, and uh, we actually used to about once a month uh, we would connect with some people up in uh, 
Johnson City, and we'd play D and D over <laughs> over like fucking uh, like Skype chats yeah. and stuff. And it was it was actually really fun, and it, it worked out really well. But uh, but yeah, so I mean, you know, like we're saying, the social distancing thing. I think it's a good idea. You know, if if you don't have to be around the public, and you know, whatever, try try not to try. We want to flatten that curve stuff, so. But, um, dude, what's I up? just got a notification Uh-oh. <laughs> that somebody added me to a group. Okay. This is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a, it's a group here in town to let yeah. you know what stores have what in stock. <laughs> and it's seriously. Also, it's just people posting random shit. Like one yeah. person just said, it's the flu that turns into pneumonia. What? what? What is that's the whole thing? It's what? The flu that turns into pneumonia. Is it? I don't think that's how. Okay, um, thirty-four minutes ago. I know this sounds a little out there, but is anyone else taking some cash out of the bank and/or making sure to keep their cars gassed up? Take a seat. <laughs> but there is a picture of the Target over by the mall mm-hmm. yesterday at two p.m. No toilet paper, limited paper towels. Of what they did have, only one package of paper towels allowed per household. But there's a picture, and the whole aisle is absolutely empty of the toilet paper. <laughs> and I'm like, that, like, thank you for your service, I guess. Uh, this is a weird group, y'all. Man, no shit. Also, don't, I love don't the fall internet. For it. Yeah, I know, right? It's so strange, and I, I can't stop looking at it. So I did see something about uh, the president of uh, China traveling to actual, like, well, supposedly traveling to Wuhan. Or the what is it Hubei Hubei province yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. and people were saying, "Oh, you know, could this be indicative of like it getting better, kind of thing?" So, like, okay, we can basically say, however long you know China's been dealing with this for what since December basically was when it started uh, or started I getting think... reported. Is that about right? I'm... I thought it was around the end of the year, yeah. but I don't know. But like, I'm just, I'm just kind of wondering because I, you know, I, I, it's, it has to be, it has to be at least slowing down, kind of thing. Because I feel like it's losing, it's losing steam in the media almost. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but I don't know that that <laughs> I don't I don't have anything to support that thought. That's just more of a, uh, more of a maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know we don't know we're just winging it exactly but um hmm, okay well uh you got anything else um i had one thing i was really gonna get into but yeah. i don't want to <laughs> but i will i will quickly mention it yeah. um newsweek had a story this week and the title of it was okay millennial and the subtitle said boomers are the greatest generation in history it was the cover, yeah, and it showed a boomer. He absolutely should have been captioned "Get off my lawn." Like the picture, it <laughs> really? was like him with like a raised fist in like a front yard. <laughs> oh my God. And the whole thing was basically saying, um, uh. "You let's see." Boomers are the greatest generation the world has ever known. This is written by Boomer, obviously. Um, <laughs> the most innovative, the most caring, the hardest working. Like, are you any of these things? So I went through and uh, I like, I left my comments like throughout the whole story and I was going to go through it all, but like, it's not worth it. <laughs> but he pretty much breaks down all this stuff and he talks about like the Great Recession is nothing compared to the Great Depression. Motherfucker, that was before you were yeah, born. I was, I was gonna say I don't think that falls in the uh no, you can't have the that. boomer category. No. <laughs> and and he also says uh millennials think that their challenges are greater than any of the any other generation has faced. Uh dude, have you seen our finances? <laughs> so he goes on through all this and at one point he said, Opioids, we had heroin and crack. Heroin is an opioid, motherfucker. <laughs> well, heroin is an opiate. Well, not, not to no, split I, differences, I googled but, yeah. and I found several medical things that said yeah. it's like an opioid, blah 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 blah. It's a, it's it's, it's false. Yeah. the same. Category. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But like, <laughs> but through the whole thing, I'm just like shaking my fist. It's at, just, yeah. Oh my god. I, uh, 
And then, so I finally, it's it's just exhausting and I don't want to just bitch through a whole story. Yeah. But I was very surprised because finally at the end of the article, he totally changes tone. Mm-hmm. And I would have not <laughs> finished this article if I wasn't trying to cover it for the podcast. Yeah. yeah. So I would not have ever known that he changed. But at the yeah. very end, he says... You are ready. You're bigger than we were by about an inch. You're smarter by about 10 IQ points. You're much better educa- educated. Far more people are completing high school and college than ever before. Yeah. You have extraordinary technology, and it's hard to quantify, but you have another advantage that we didn't. You're woke. You understand. We understand we needed to account. We understood <laughs> we needed to account for things like bias and privilege, but we didn't really know how. Yeah. You have a much better understanding of the world around you and how it works. And I'm like, what? This guy likes us? And then he says, one last piece of advice. Aim higher. And I was like, oh, good. We're back to bitching at us. We're not. Uh, He says, your passion for change seems to be mostly for yourselves. Health insurance, child care, student loans, paid family leave. Our passion was often to help others. Civil rights, apartheid, and famines in places like Bangladesh, Biafra, and Ethiopia. uh Yes, it was naive to think a few concerts like Live Aid could save millions, but it was rude and good intentions. Our generation may have failed in execution, but we did not fail in ambition. You're right to be scared by the enormity of the tasks before you. It could be very bad if you don't do something, but you will do something. And as you do, do your best to avoid our mistakes, but don't lose sight of what we did right. Good luck. Okay, millennial? Okay. And I was like, this is like that was, that's such pretty, a good ending. Yeah, that was a really good, uh, that was a roller coaster of emotions. Right? <laughs> and dude, the article's, the article's pretty long and it, there's no paywall or anything. It's on Newsweek. If yeah. you just search Newsweek, okay, millennial, it's out there. Yeah. I, it'll make you mad to read and then you get to the end and you're like, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. Dude, and that's that's the, it's it's always been fascinating to me that it's like all these generations that it's like, oh, this, you know, you're wrong, I'm right, this, yeah. that, and the other kind of shit. Dude, I think that if, basically, in my opinion, the, uh, the human race gets better and better. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, okay... When you when when the when our parents' generation looked at their parents' generation, I'm sure they were thinking, "Man, you guys are just a bunch of fuck ups," kind of thing. Sure, and, and this, that, and the other. Sure. And you know what? Now we we look back, and, yeah. and you know what's going to happen? I'm sure Finn is going to grow up, and he's going to be like, "Dude, I can't believe you you lived in a world like that." Yeah, kind of thing. Oh yeah, because I mean, we're just we're constantly evolving. We're constantly we're constantly getting better. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You know? and that's and so, the whole point of life, I yeah, guess, is yeah. to get better. Yeah, you know exactly. I don't know. I mean, learn learn from history. You know. Yeah. Try but, not to uh, repeat the bad parts. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, uh, all right, well, this is going to be a little bit shorter of a show because, to be perfectly candid with you, it was very difficult drumming up. I'm just, I'm almost, like, out of breath with just, like, fucking trying to I know. keep on top of news stuff. I Like, I, I, I poked through the New York Times this morning, and there were no stories that were not virus-related yeah. other than one thing that was, like, Here's our recommended reading for the weekend. And I clicked on it and it just happened to be a few stories that weren't. Yeah. Everything else was. Yeah. And it's yeah. exhausting and it's very repetitive. And I'm having a hard time trying to decide what to read. Well, yeah. You I know? mean, because, yeah, the thing is, is like, well, you know, we, we try to drum up uh, interesting stuff to, to bring to the show and stuff. But like... At the same time, man, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to drone on for two hours about the fucking no, coronavirus. Yeah. Everybody's heard plenty of fucking, yeah. you know, about it and everything. Oh, I did see, What's and that? I don't think I mentioned this to you. Uh-huh. Louisiana put off their primary. I oh, I saw that. I yeah. saw that. Yeah. I'm like, I bet more states will do that. I I would be. But there's there's so many cancellations, you can't see them. You can't yeah. even see them all. Yeah. Exactly. Like last week, we were joking about South by being canceled, and this week it's everything. Yeah. Welcome to Cancel Corner. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> what is canceled? American life as we All know of it. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh. um, I do have a real quick mention for any of the gamers out there. 
uh, I saw a very disheartening uh, article about the supply chains for uh, the new Xboxes and Playstations. Yeah. Most likely will be... I, I would actually go as far as to say I'm almost positive that the supply chains are going to be disrupted and that shit ain't dropping holiday 2020 anymore. No. So, <laughs> which I was like, no! Now I'm going to have to play my PlayStation 4 for another, uh, whatever, six months kind yeah. of thing. So, but, uh, but yeah, so anyway, um, I'm looking at the time, and we're right around an hour and a half, so uh, I'd say we're going to put a little, uh, nice little bow on episode 92 of the Tether Radio podcast. Um, honestly, Ed, you know, we are looking very, very hard for uh, topics to, to bring to you guys. <laughs> Please throw them our way. Not virus related. Yeah. If you need to know a place to send those topic suggestions, uh, I'll give you a place. Tetherradio at gmail.com. That is T-E-T-H-E-R-R-A-D-I-O at gmail.com. Uh, we are on Jack Dorsey's Twitter sphere. Uh, at tether underscore radio we are also on instagram same damn handle at tether underscore radio uh we've got a small presence on the facebook uh business page stuff tether radio all one word and we have the ever bustling group tether radio after dark uh yeah we you know we've actually started getting a, a solid some solid conversations and just uh, passing back of uh, boots yeah. on the ground having a good time and stuff so yeah join the join the fun and uh, hop on there also I uh, want to remind everybody the Tether Radio newsletter that Allie puts out every week is the bee's knees <laughs> and it also is in in the newsletter all of our stuff is linked for, from. Uh, the topics and stuff that we covered uh to sign up for it tetherradio.substack.com or we have a uh a tweet that is pinned on our twitter account if you want to hop over there and just click on the url or whatever um so yeah i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart uh for joining us for about an hour and a half this has been episode 92 of the tether radio podcast i'm daniel i'm ali And we are thanking you once again for joining us. Stay safe out there, guys. Don't panic, even though I know saying don't panic probably won't help. Uh, Just just try to try to uh, seat your decisions in logic and reasoning. How about that? Um, And we thank you for joining us this week and look forward to chatting next week. Take it easy, friendos. Bye.